Hey guys, Stealth here. Time for a Commonwealth replay. This one was sent in by Tactical, and we're going to be following him as he is doing this 10v10 match. In the comments with the replay, he said that he was pushing through their lines and held the line. Uh, he gave his team a foothold to flank through, stopped a massive helo rush. A longbow sent to support him was extremely useful, so let's see if we can make that the star of the show. And he said, uh, please could you tell me how to improve on my game? Because, um, uh, well, apparently he wants some tips on how to improve. So let's see what he's going to use. Uh, first off, it seems he's taking the right flank here at Zulu. But judging by the amount of units that are spawning next to it, I don't think that he's going to have a lot of support here. But someone always has to take the outer flank. Uh, preferably, ideally over this map, you have a spread of two or three there. Two or three there, and then two or three there, and one is going to be a support player. Usually that's how these 10 v 10s plays out. Um, looks like there is some support anyway. <coughs> this is um, AMD, with a couple of anti-air helicopters and a Cobra to spot for them. Although it is a dual Cobra recon team, that's a bit unusual. Let's see what else he's going to... Where do you go? Okay, over to the left flank. He's spawning a couple of Lynx AH-1, so that could be Gurkhas, could be SCS. Not sure yet. Let's see if he's put down a marker. Jamler. Tactical put down a marker here. I'm not sure why he'd want to go over this way. So, let's see. He quickly deployed some units, possibly because he saw that there were not enough people going towards the left flank or the, say, the middle of the map. He has deployed uh, warriors. Okay, I'm going to pause it here. The first thing that you need to do to improve your gameplay is put the vehicles on the road. Because the time that it takes them to get to the road is valuable time that you don't uh, want to lose as you're gaining terrain and pushing towards Gulf, for example, or at least towards these uh, houses over there. The other one is that the Lynx AH-1s were parked on the grass. If you put them above the trees, they're going to be already in the air, so you don't have to take off. And that's going to save you... Well, depending on the type of helicopter, 5 to 10 seconds. I know it may not sound like a lot, but it can definitely make a difference on when your troops are going to arrive. And especially if you're countering helo rushes, it is going to be significant. Now, I'm not sure where he's going, but um, I doubt that these troops were all put on fast move. By the looks of it, he might be sending his uh, CP towards Romeo to capture that. But looking at the map, I'm a bit worried about this right flank. <laughs> Why empty here? Yeah. Jarrah makes a good point here. This is something you're going to see quite a bit in 10v10s. People just not looking at the flanks, only concerned about their own zone. So he starts by sending his helos here and then not dropping off the infantry. That's another interesting thing here. Try to push up as far as you can. That's usually the way I play it. Um, <clears throat> you could call it aggressive, other people call it push to contact, but the lesson is here, keep pushing until you make contact with something to make sure that you have the best and the, the greatest terrain gain that you can possibly get. Another thing that's interesting here is that he's putting his CV in the middle of a block of buildings instead of putting it in the tree line for cover. So next time, put your CV in tree lines, because over here it can easily get spotted by a recon helicopter or reconnaissance infantry. Whereas here it's going to be much more difficult to find, and this does count as cover. It is not a lot, but it is a dense hedged farmland, as the game calls it, and that will provide you a little bit of cloaking for your uh, CV. A ferret over here as a recon vehicle is not the best option either. This vehicle needs to be either over there, where it can spot this open terrain, or send it up towards here. Now, another thing is sending the SAS here. It's a bit curious. Um, if you want to use SAS over here, just drop them off with the helicopters. Or, if you're feeling uh, dauntless, you can just try and capture this block of terrain. But he only had a couple of SAS, two groups, and three groups of warriors, which, again, he's not using. These guys don't have any reconnaissance either. So there is definitely some things that he can improve about his game, but that's where we're here, and that's what I'm looking at this replay. So please, if you're commenting on this game, um, let him know, let Tactical know what he can improve upon, not everything that he's doing wrong. I don't want this to turn into a flame war. 
Now as he's slowly pushing up here, I'm curious to see how the right flank is doing because it seemed not to be doing too well, judging on the amount of units that were or actually were not here. We've got Dumpling over here, Red Overlord. It's a bit of everything here. Three or four players have jumped into this gap. And they're just operating with helicopters, no really ground holding to, uh, units yet. But bloody hell, look at the middle of the map. <coughs> there is definitely a lot going on here. Looks like Scandinavia has arrived with a lot of units. And with these, they should be able to push out these units. Considering they were all in their transports, I'm doubting that the guy who was manning these is very experienced. So it seems that we got quite a few new players um, operating in the middle. And over on the right flank, um, I think there are some more veteran players because they seem to know what they're doing. Now let's see about <coughs> Tactical over here on the left. Um, he's not doing that much. He might be saving up his points, but I don't really see him doing anything of calling in new units. So Tactical, that's definitely something that you need to bring in. Uh, he's bringing in a Gazelle here. A Ferret over here is not going to spot a whole lot. This Ferret is just... and the camera is not really working here. This ferret is just not in a good position. It can barely see over this ridge line, and that means that the only real thing it's spotting is this hillside. So the next time you're using a reconnaissance unit over here, either push it up into uh, this tree line, or use command uh, reconnaissance infantry here, for example. Recon helicopter is okay, but it is a bit uh, dangerous as there might be a A here, whereas reconnaissance infantry has a much higher stealth value and is much easier to hide. I gotta say, it's an interesting match considering how many gaps there are in the blue 4 and the red 4 line. Because um, over here there are no defensive blue 4 units, nothing over here, so a tank column that could come down this way would have a very, very high chance of success. Um, groups of 4 bucks are something that you don't see very often either. Javelins just moving from forest to forest doesn't make a lot of sense. And then there's two CVs, so they're definitely not coordinating. And Tactical is now putting down help markers. Only put down help markers when you need help, not when um, you're not anywhere near that region. Let's see, point-wise, Red Force only a little bit ahead by 400 points. The middle... Yeah, the middle is definitely Blue Fort territory now. <coughs> the only question is when are they going to capture and neutralize Gulf? Okay, let's see. Um, tactical, if you want to engage a position like this, what I would bring here is, for example, a ferret, a couple of those maxes, because they're not doing anything over here. You don't have to hold any kind of position because there's just nothing to defend against. You can put those warriors up a little bit more because they're not going to be that useful out there. Um, but what you could do is send up a couple of maxes, maybe um, a leopard, no, sorry, not a leopard, um, a challenger 1 mark 1. Because even those units could easily wipe out those bucks. And that's going to give you 4 times 70 points. So 280 points is just sitting here waiting to get killed. And Red Four is also engaging. So considering the amount of troop transports, now the Fusiliers and or uh, the Warriors would be useful here with those Rardens. If you can keep them in, for example, a position like this or over there, you can put on a lot of autocannon fire to support either the Martyrs and or the Panzer Grenadiers or make sure that the transports here cannot be offloaded. Um, he's putting down markers here. He wants a Hilo CV. A Hilo CV is something that I um, have used, but only when I couldn't get any other CV, which was in uh, my latest gameplay of The Old War Part 2. And you don't need a helicopter CV here, there's just no reason for it. You might not even want to capture it because it's pretty difficult to defend. But if you want to bring a command unit here, make sure it's an infantry CV because you can hide those in the buildings or back here in this small tree line. That is, if you can keep this line safe. And that is something that right now isn't the case yet. Also, the Fusiliers here could have just easily pushed up with the Warrior 90s all the way into these buildings. And the Fusiliers would have been safe. 
And the Warrior 90s would have been able to just defeat these vehicles with ease as they were coming up this road. Because uh, these heavy machine guns and the infantry that's going to come out of it is no match for the Rard uh, autocannon that's on here. Also, these leopards completely out of position. Make sure you push those up. A tank is meant to be on the move and attacking. And these things are just sitting here um, doing a whole lot of nothing the whole game. And you have <coughs> a 150 point investment just sitting here. So make sure that if you're using a couple of these tanks, um, they're perfectly good tanks, just make sure you push up with them. For some reason or another, the SAS are not engaging the Mutstrelki. Um, I don't think they're out of range. But the SAS... I don't know, there's no really a ridge line here. So they should be able to just engage each other. That's curious. Instead, he's pushing up with the Fusiliers against BRDM-3. He did manage to take him out, but he lost at least one squad and a couple of guys. Max is pushing up. And now they're actually starting to do some damage to these Mutstrelkis. Now, this is going to be a uh, rolling retreat by the looks of it. The K1s over here, K1A1, support M1A1, Chimeras, they're really putting up a defensive line here and this is really the use that I want to see for a tank. Not necessarily um, going at it alone, but defeating other vehicles, other units, and example, for example the T55 AMVs are absolutely no match for an M1A1. And tactical, you could be doing the same thing if only you had, for example, a couple of challengers or those uh, Leopard C2 Maxes that you could be using over here in the open. Because they are nice and mobile units. Um, let's see, I believe they are yeah, the 60 kph off-road with medium optics, so you don't really need a reconnaissance unit, although it's of course always handy to have one. But you could easily be picking off a couple of these BMP3s, uh, that is, if they don't kill you with the Arcans. PT-90s are easy targets. T-80s are going to be a bit more difficult, but you can still penetrate those. And these guys, the SU-122-54s, are very, very easy targets. So just be a bit more aggressive, and make sure that you park a Challenger 1 or 2 here. Let's say a 1 Mark III would be enough to just engage these BMPs. Put a recon unit next to it, or have your Gazelle spot here, and you can easily wipe out those BMPs. Another very, very interesting use of the Thunderbolt here. Um, either the bucks were turned off or empty, but they did not manage to shoot down this Thunderbolt. And instead of coming in with a seat plane, someone brought in a Thunderbolt to engage AA, which is, well, it's dangerous. Uh, this is something you don't see every day either. A stack of longbows. Two longbows operating here. Um, not sure why. One longbow is a force to be reckoned with, let alone two. But this is a 300 point group. Oh, there you go. He might have brought them in together to split them up later. Let's see, one of them is turning around, and the other seems to be operating as a spotter here. Considering the amount of red four forces that are operating here, I don't think that they have a lot over there. So in this situation, I would start probing these lines if I wasn't helping with the defense. And um, Tactical isn't helping with the defense at this point. So what he could be doing is investing points into fast units, like for example a couple of uh, helicopters, possibly with infantry. Because if you can capture these buildings, you have a pretty solid hold of Red 4 country. Um, and with a recon helicopter and possibly an ATGM helicopter as escort, maybe some Lynx 20 mils, you can easily wipe out anything in here. If it's just a couple of CVs. And let's see if my guess is correct. No, they do have quite some stuff in here. A couple of AA guns. Especially Buryuzas are some uh, things you need to be worried about. But um, AT-wise, they don't have a lot. Except for these uh, VPs. But I... No, I was thinking they were going to be on the move. But they're just, I don't know, hovering here. So Red 4 is hovering here with 200 points, which are doing nothing. He might be grouping those up. This is Redru, and this is another player. So a bit of AA, a bit of AT, and you can just roll in here. So tactical, be more aggressive is my main lesson here. Just 
Uh, don't be afraid of pushing into contact. Let's see where that CV's going. My bet would be that he's going to park that thing inside this block of buildings again. Um, which is definitely not a good position for a CV, especially if it's a vehicle. Infantry can still work, but a vehicle is going to get destroyed very easily. If one of those heavy MiG bombers with um, a couple of 500 kilogram bombs would come in, it would go down to the RBS-70 and the SCS, but it would also wipe out probably the RBS, at least the CV, um, the Milan team that's moving out in the open, and anything else that um, doesn't really, or isn't really enough into cover. Now he mentioned in his description that he was holding the line um, and pushing through their line. Maybe we're going to see that, but um, as of yet I haven't seen it that much. Now definitely a helicopter offensive here. Again, a combination of Cobras here by AMD. Come on. Not sure why you'd want to have these guys in the group. Very, very curious. Especially if you also have a Kiowa Warrior Reconnaissance Unit here. Kiowa, sorry, Cobras, Scout Cobras are perfectly capable of operating alone. And you don't need them in groups of two unless you're going after some infantry. But in that case, using a little bird would be uh, just as effective. Or using, sorry, two little birds then. Because you can get the same thing for the same price. Or using a cheap Cobra version of the base uh, Cobra. Here come a couple of Challengers, one Mark III, so pretty heavy. And they're arriving just in time because there's quite some targets which are presenting themselves here. A lot of EDV. And this would be a perfect time to send up those Warriors and engage those VDVs before they can get into the buildings. A couple got wiped out. Lynx AH-1 wouldn't really be a good option with their machine guns. But Challenger Marksmen are excellent anti-ground units at 1000 meter range. Keep in mind though that these guys will be in range pretty soon, but you can probably stun them. <coughs> now this is what I was hoping to see. Feral over here is engaging, although he should have been escorted by at least some AA and these Challenger 1 Mark 3s, although they are useful over here in taking down a couple of these tanks as they're showing up. And this is just no match for a Challenger 1 Mark 3. These things have 20 frontal armor and 21 armor penetration, versus 11 frontal armor and 13 armor penetration, so they're never going to penetrate the Challenger. The Challenger can just one-shot these tanks. And, yep, good counter here by uh, Redru. Just napalming the infantry, and the Canadian Airborne seems to be retreating, possibly trying to clear out this forest. Although this forest, at this point in time, is not really a strategic asset. Since it's going to be hard to cross this road without being shot by either uh, AT vehicles, tanks, or helicopters that are operating from this side or that side. So he might just be retreating back into this forest to make sure that his infantry isn't wiped out by T-55s. Some very expensive helicopters coming in here. This is 300 points and this is another 260 points. So let's see if the Challenger Marksman can survive that. It's lucky that there are no uh, KA-52s here because those would have turned these Marksmen into scrap really quickly. But just attacking here without even so much as a reconnaissance unit is just, yeah, there you go, 260 down. That's just a waste of these units. You don't get that many Akulas, you get two in a deck. Marksman got hit, but survived, and yeah, there you go. Took down a lot of points, but they were just presented to him on a silver platter here. Now, somehow, Red 4 managed not to push up here anymore. Um, if I were to push up here, coming from this side, I would put a couple of tanks in here, some reconnaissance units, um, some AA to back it up to make sure I cannot be airstriked and preferably infrared AA with some um, radar guided AA here in the back to make sure that with the radar guided AA you can lure the enemy planes 
And um, as you see them coming in, you turn off the radar and the infrared AA takes down the planes because that seems to be what Blue 4 is using mostly at this point. Just a bit of Blue 4, uh, sorry, radar guided uh, AA, which is pretty easily dispensed with uh, by a couple of those prowlers that I saw operating over here. Anyway, very, very high amount of forces here by tactical. Um, he has way too many units in this position here. You don't need SAS sitting behind your CV. So if you have SAS and you see a couple of stollies lying about doing nothing, put them in there and make them move. Make them go towards, for example, this forest to act as a uh, forward anti-air force with those stingers. And this is what I was expecting. The CV that he had over here just got utterly destroyed by the bomber that just came in. Of course, the bomber went down, as well as his MiG-27K buddy over there. But at the expense of a CV, some SAS, um, I think his AA, yeah, it managed to survive. But otherwise, um, there's just too many forces here. And you can see that of 30 Fusiliers, four survived. I think they were out here when they were attacked by that bomber. Another thing... Um, it's a bit of a detail, but he's bringing in a group of two Chinooks. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you want to bring in two Chinooks, make sure there are two single Chinooks. If you have them in a group of two, the resupply of your forces will not begin until both of the Chinooks have landed. And I found that, um, for some reason or another, sometimes the game just doesn't let the second Chinook land. So even if the first one has been on the ground for at least 30 seconds, and you want to get that resupply done fast, the other one uh, has to land first before the resupply begins. So if you want to bring them in in the future, um, don't stack them. Just have one over here, for example, and the other there. Because even if they do a bombing run on this position again, you might lose both of these Chinooks, whereas if you have a Chinook over there, one over there, they're faster to start offloading, they're faster and safer to get out there. Because they're dispersed and they're not exactly in one big group there. I know it's a little bit more micromanagement, but if you queue orders, you can perfectly do that. Now, let's see how the right flank is doing. Um, got Red Overlord here. All of these units are Red Overlord, except for these units, the Marines by Jammer. More Red Overlord. Gotta say, for a flank that was empty at the beginning of the game, they have really managed to pick up the pace here and capture all of this area. Um, Dumpling has a bit of a weird position for his CV here. This would be better. This Bradley, I would put that thing over there to have an overwatch position with both the main Bushmaster gun and those Itos. Of course, having a reconnaissance unit nearby would have also been useful. Um, and I'm not sure why he's having a couple of these M1 IPs over here. I would put those in here to make sure that they can suppress any infantry that comes out of the forest or to make sure that I can shoot down any of those transport that might come down the road. Now I know it's very very easy for me to just start commenting on everything I see, uh, but this is how I read the battlefield and you come to my channel to get my opinions and stuff, so here it is. Now this is probably the Hilo spam or Hilo assault that he meant. Um, mentioned in his replay description. And I think he has enough AA to counter that successfully, considering that these units are out of ammo. The Challenger is also almost out of ammo and his partner has been killed. Let's see, there is a Stormer. Those are nice units, but I doubt they're going to have enough ammo and accuracy to completely neutralize everything that's in there. And the fact that there was a CV over here from an ally is confusing. Um, I have no idea what you, why you'd want to put a CV into an exposed area like that if it's not a conquest game. Over here on the left, Blue 4 has managed to re-establish a defensive and even an offensive. I thought they were going to just be pushed back, because that's usually what happens to me. You keep falling back into this forest, then into these forests, then back to your CV zone. But these guys managed to turn it around and recapture the area. Now, um, I think that yeah, at least one Chinook got blown up, the other one might have made it out. Although I'm not seeing it anywhere near. 
So I'm thinking that one went down. And somehow they just took down those helicopters pretty quickly. Let's see. He has these RBS, which are out of ammo. Marksman hasn't fired. He has a Chelly 2 over here. Challenger 2 is a unit that you should always be using to attack. That's what these things are for. You don't have 170 point units sitting on the front of your lines doing nothing. As your neighbors, and I would consider these his neighbors, are uh, trying to push in with more units. So tactical, make sure that your high-end units, your Challenger 2s, your Challenger Marksmen are on the offensive because that's what they were designed to do. Also, um, having a ferret back here and a couple of those Leopards C2 Maxes, it is a uh, decent idea to have at least some defensive positions over here. Uh, by the way, this CV, please put it either over there or in these tree lines to provide some cover for it because this is just an easy target for an airstrike or um, some infantry if it gets lucky and manages to flank this position. Also this gazelle should be on hover high because right now it's just looking at the surrounding trees and the bushes that are underneath it. That's the only thing it can see. And this is an exceptional optics reconnaissance unit. It should be over the front line. It should be scouting. Um, it's just not doing anything here. Another thing is that these bisons are very very aggressive. If there was one group of VDV that was out here left as a sort of picket fence, they would just be wiped out right away. They have taken some damage, possibly from a counter artillery battery or counter fire, but I'm a bit curious as to why uh, he's moving them here. He's possibly trying to support this flank with artillery fire. Now they have managed to get 80% of destruction points and considering the game has 3 minutes left and we haven't seen any quitters, or at least not that many, I think that they somehow managed to score 4,000 points. So judging by the map, um, Red 4 has quite some high-end units over here, like the MI-24V, that's worth 100 points. But it cannot be the only thing. There's either a ton of units in here that they're going to eliminate with these helicopters but they don't really seem to be pushing up. There are the M1IPs, of course, and the Chimeras. Chimera is not an offensive unit, by the way. It's just not fast enough to do that. Or rather, let me put that differently. I don't use the Chimera as an offensive unit because it is not fast enough and its rate of fire isn't high enough. I use these as defensive units in a choke point position. Having a Chimera in the position where uh, Tactical has these Leopard C2 Maxis over here they would present a formidable roadblock. Over here they are um, <laughs> dead and they are completely out of position. Oh here it is, group of chimeras. They're completely out of position. They don't have a spotter at the moment and considering that these things have poor optics they are virtually blind. They're not going to be able to see any targets as they come up. Now, a group of Thunderbolts coming in, some Draken after it. And it looks like they managed to do a bit more points there, almost at 18,000 now. 90%. So, to summarize, um, make sure that you have reconnaissance in the right place. This ferret is not in the right place. This position is much more suitable for reconnaissance infantry, sitting, for example, on this hilltop. With this uh, hilltop covered by reconnaissance infantry, you can see what is coming down the road. And putting a chimera, which is something that a commonwealth deck can provide, putting that thing over there would have easily locked it down, maybe with the backup of one AA unit. That frees up your Maxis. You can send either your Maxis forward to attack with the Challenger, the Aslav S Recon and the Challenger Marksman. Or you can help out your allies by providing some annoying uh, tank missions over here in Bravo. Or push up with the main group through Quebec and into Papa over here. Don't be afraid to push into contact because it took quite long for you to move from Romeo all the way over into Delta. And if you want to move with infantry and you see that you have to cross the gap from this bit of cover, these forests, if you want to call them forests to the other side, make sure you use your fusilier, um, not your fusiliers, the uh, warrior transports. 
Now I gotta say, point-wise, he didn't do bad. Actually, he did uh, very, very good, considering he only lost 630. But I'm going to uh, tune this down a little bit, because he did manage this score, because the enemy was not playing very well. He was handing over quite a bit of points. Um, the bombers were very easy to shoot down. And I'm not saying that he played badly. I'm just saying that there's quite a bit of room for improvement. So tactical, um, I hope that with this gameplay and with my commentary, you are able to improve your gameplay. Be sure to read the comments as well, because I'm sure that others will have great tips for you. So guys, if you've seen anything that I didn't cover yet, make sure that you mention it so that Tactical can improve his gameplay. Because sometimes, or someday, he might be your teammate and you want to have a good teammate on your team, right? Okay, so that's the end of the replay for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button down below. If you have a great replay that you want to show me, look in the description for the link on how you can send me your replay, and I'll be happy to cover it. Just make sure you put down a good description on what happened in the game, what I should pay attention to, and what you want to get out of the replay. With that, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.